Hey everybody, David Shapiro here. Um, so there was a post on the OpenAI forum that was asking about, well here, let me just show you. Um, what was it? The guy was asking about, where was it? Um, he was asking how to fine tune from scratch. Uh, oh, it was this one, okay. Okay, so let me show you guys this. So this guy asked, I'm using short stories that I wrote to bias the voice of, of what GPT-3 generates. I've tried to format data in multiple ways, but maybe before I spend another chunk of money, someone already went through this and has some tips to share. So he tried a few strategies. So, uh, someone tagged me, thank you for that, um, pulling my attention to, to this post. I had done a similar experiment to basically using um, fine tuning or uh, GPT-3 to do fiction. So that was my AutoMuse project. So the code is here. It doesn't really work. I abandoned it six months ago. Um, I just got a couple things working. I didn't know as much as I know then. I've been experimenting with it ever since. So um, that's the background. Uh, so here's my response. I said, achieving coherent fiction as, as we imagine it is perhaps one of the most elusive tasks yet. I would recommend following the documented example of fine tuning where you leave the prompt empty and put the whole story or a big chunk of it as the completion. This requires more samples, but it can fine tune the model on your style and tone. Alternatively, you might try having one paragraph of the prompt and the subsequent paragraph as the completion. So like paragraph A is the input, paragraph B is the completion. So it knows, you know, follow up this paragraph with the next one. Um, and I said, apparently AI Dungeon uses a lore book mechanism so that the major details of the story can be referenced at all times for each completion. With this, you might be able to have a lore book section of the input prompt as well as the previous paragraphs. And then you can have the next paragraphs as the completion. If that doesn't make sense, don't worry, I'll show you what I mean because um, I'm just talking it, talking through it. So I said this gives me some ideas. Let's go it. So that's that's what we're doing today. I'm We're experimenting. You're just writing shotgun watching the whole process. I don't even know what I'm doing. This is this is rapid prototyping. Um, okay, so we're going to call this AutoMuse2. Um, experiment to generate fiction. Um, uh, let's see. Novel length fiction from a single story premise. And I've already got a premise for this. Uh, add a readme, da, da, da. I'll be recycling some code. Okay, so we got this, clone it down, get clone, AutoMuse2. Okay, so I've got a few things that I'm gonna borrow. There's the, where is it? Um, what was it, the movie script generator. Hold on, what did I call this? Oh, that's right, I, I was named incorrectly. Um, okay, so I already generated a whole bunch of movie premises. So if you watch a previous video, I go over about like just generating this. Um, but basically, this is like a whole premise of a story. Um, okay, so let's copy the premises into our new um, into our new uh, bleh, 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 repo. That's the word I'm looking for. The new repo will be brain. What are you doing? What did I just name this thing? AutoMuse2, there we go. Okay, so we're starting with some data. That's what this is. So I've got a folder um, that just contains, uh, it's 200 um, story premises. Uh, and yeah, they must now find a way to warn other humans of the impending danger. Um, yeah, so all very dramatic. Uh, so here's my idea. So my idea, intuitively, is we'll put in the premise playground. So let's just, this is usually where I start is like, again, you're riding shotgun. This is, this is a cold open. Um, so we'll say like premise. Um, let's see, write a novel based on the following premise. Um, and, uh, and yeah, so we'll, we've got the premise here. And then after that, we would have like uh, the story so far. I'd probably do this. And then I would do like um, uh, opening. So like nothing has happened right 
the beginning of the story. Um, let's see, the human race has reached a point. And um, someone, I think it was on YouTube, someone left a comment like, oh, you should, you should do a test where you um, you say like write in the style of. So like in my first book, Natural Language Cognitive Architecture, I showed that GPT-3, like if you say like write as if you're a Victorian gentleman, it'll write like that. If you say write like Shakespeare, it'll write like that. If you say write like a chav, which is like, um, uh, what is that? That's like a, a, a ruffian from England. Um, it'll write like that. Um, so uh, let's see, write a story based on the following premise. Um, write like Frank Herbert. So we'll say like, write like the dude who wrote Dune, um, copying his style. There are ethical implications with that. Um, we'll see how it does. So um, novel, uh, let's see, chapter one. Let's just see what it does. Uh, it looks like it's probably just going to copy. Yeah. I think it's just copying what it had already. The human race is where it had, uh, the human race has reached a point where it exhausted all of our resources and a last ditch effort to save our species. We sent a colonization. So yeah, they were soon by met by a hostile alien race. Let me copy this into, um, notepad plus plus. This might not work at all. Yeah. It looks like it's just going to copy copy it verbatim. So this is this is a problem um, with uh, with with GPT three, especially DaVinci two. Um, let's turn up the temperature. Crank it up to 11. Um, so with with fiction, you usually want to have um, the, the temperature higher because that makes it more creative and less deterministic. Um, but also I found that turning the frequency penalty up uh, a little bit not a, not a whole lot, but just turning up the frequency penalty a little bit tends to make it be a little bit more creative. I figured that out when I was making the um, the the movie script generator was because it kept generating the same like story patterns over and over again. Um, but if I, when I turned the frequency penalty up and the temperature up, it got a little bit better. So let's see what happens now. Yeah, it's just copying itself. Um, write a novel. Let's see if I can conjole this into add a presence penalty as well. This, like I'm saying, this might not work at all. Um, yeah, okay, this isn't gonna work, that's fine. I wasn't expecting it to, I just wanted to do a test. Um, the reason that I'm doing this is because a lot of you have left comments both on the forum and on YouTube saying that you like seeing the whole process, including what doesn't work. So leaning into that, see if you guys like it. Here's what I was planning on doing originally. So big, big step back. How do you know how to write a story? Um, huh, practice. Uh, no, that's, that's not just it. You, so there's, there's several schools of thought when it comes to writing fiction, there's, there's plotters and there's pantsers. So like plotters are the ones that like, I write an outline and then I plan out each scene and then I do this and planning, planning, planning. And then finally you write the actual prose. And then pantsers are the ones who just sit down at the keyboard and start typing. Most people are somewhere in between. What I do for my fiction is I, um, I start with an outline that is about a page long and then I just start writing. Um, I, the outline just says chapter one is this is what's going to happen. Chapter two, this is what's going to happen. So I just kind of have a, have a vague idea and then my brain expands on that. Now, can we teach GPT-3 to do that? So far, it seems like it really sucks at this. Um, but Sherlock Holmes, um, actually here, we'll just do browsing options. Where is the top books? Um, popular. There we go. Our most popular books sort order and then so what i'm doing is i've got this idea where if we just grab the text versions of plain utf8 brilliant um is this the whole thing so basically my thought is let's grab the text versions of 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 stories from gutenberg it's in the public domain, so it's perfectly free. There's nothing um, dubious about this. This is all completely free data. Um, let's see, which one is this? This is Frankenstein. So we'll go back to the AutoMuse, make a new folder called books, go in here and we'll call this 
Frankenstein, which Frankenstein is actually the scientist, not the monster. Um, you can tell I date a librarian. Um, okay, and then Pride and Prejudice. So we'll save this. Pride and Prejudice. And this, honestly, like probably just one of these books will be enough. But, but my concern is if we if we generate fine tuning data from just one book, we're basically just going to be making a um, a fanfic generator. Which nothing wrong with that. There is a huge hunger for fan fiction out there. Um, if this works, I will try and make more Harry Potter fan fiction than you could ever read. Um, that's not my shtick, but I know plenty of people who have it. Um, one of my good friends, actually, one of my writer friends, um, she wrote a Mass Effect fanfic. And uh, uh, this was like years ago, and apparently she still gets emailed for it. Um, <laughs> people wanting updates, and she's like, I, I've abandoned this years ago. Um, let's see, Alice in Wonderland. But if I can make a machine generate an unlimited amount of fan fiction, then, then we're really in business. Okay, so save link as Great Gatsby. And um, the way that I'm planning on going about this is ultra janky. Um, you're probably going to laugh. Um, but it, it, there's, there's a reason that I'm choosing to go about it this way because I also want to show you that you can be super squishy with this. GPT-3 is surprisingly forgiving because remember, all it does is predict the next character. So if you just start in the middle of a sentence and, and end in the middle of a sentence, it doesn't really care because it just says, okay, wherever we were, let's pick up from there and keep going. Um, so you don't need like clean divisions and stuff. I'll show you what I mean in just a minute. Um, Sherlock. Okay, so we've got five stories. We've got um, we've got a, a famous thriller. We've got Great Gatsby, which is um, uh, uh, literary fiction. Uh, Alice in Wonderland, which is fantasy. Pride and Prejudice, which is historical, and Frankenstein, which is um, old sci-fi. So we've got a we've got a decent decent enough cross section of um, of of types of types of fiction. Okay, so what am I going to do with this? Let me show you in principle what I'm going to do. All right, so GPT-3, you can only grab like a certain number of um, of characters or tokens at a at a at a time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to split all these up into chunks. Um, so this uh, selection is 1,000 characters. Um, basically, what I'm going to do is I'll probably look for the double new lines. Maybe not. I'll probably just grab like maybe 2,000 characters at a time and just split up the whole story into chunks, sequential chunks. Um, and from there, I will, um, uh, I'll summarize the story as it goes. Uh, so it'll be sequential chunks. I'll summarize it as it goes. And basically, the fine-tuning data will be the story so far, or first the premise, so it knows where the story is going. Um, so it'll be the premise, like the outline. Okay, outline's probably better. So top of the input will be outline. Then it will be the story so far, so like a summary of what's happened. And then the paragraph, you know, the last paragraph, and then the output will be the next paragraph. So what that'll look like is, so this is this is the fine-tuning data. So prompt, um, actually here, I'll do input. Input prompt. So this is, this is what it'll look like, so it'll be, um, um, story outline, and it'll be outline. Um, so this will probably be like a numbered, numbered uh, list. Uh, story outline, and then um, story so far. Um, actually, summary so far. Like where in the story we are. Uh, maybe like where are we in the story, and then it'll be um, summary of where we are. And then um, last chunk. So this will be like last paragraphs. And then next chunk. And then this will be the end. And then so this will be, I'll uh, we'll just do end. And so that's this, this chunk here. I was going to point out it on the screen. You can't see my hand, so I highlight it. This chunk here will be the input. And then the output. So output slash completion will be um, just the you know, next paragraph, paragraph or two of the story. 
So basically, let's see if we can train it to spit out one section of a story at a time. I doubt it'll work, but I think it'll be a cool experiment. All right, I'm gonna pause the video because this is a lot of tweaking and stuff, and also I'm recording at 60 FPS, which means it will um, it'll blow up the file size, and I don't care. I don't care to do that. So I'm gonna pause the recording and come back when I've got this split up. I'm just gonna write a couple scripts that'll basically do this data prep, um, and then I'll be right back. Okay, we're back prematurely because I realize there's something else that I'm doing that you'd probably benefit from seeing. Um, I use GPT-3 to give me a summary, or the, the outline, because um, I don't want to write an outline for these, and also I haven't read them all, and just, so shoot, shoot me, sue me. Um, okay, so here's the file of Frankenstein the story, and then here's the outline. So then this is all going to be broken down and summarized. So let me just show you the prompt. Write the full detailed outline of the book Alice in Wonderland. I put the, um, uh, let's put this up to a thousand, uh, no, 500 tokens. Um, if it's longer than that, it might not fit in the fine tuning data. Um, okay. So then introduction, that doesn't help. Um, detailed outline, buddy, detailed. There we go. Hmm. I don't like this. We want you to give me a long, write the long, full detailed outline of the book, Alice in Wonderland. Mm, it seems like it is trying to shortchange me. Unacceptable machine, unacceptable. Realizes it was all just a dream. Um, this worked for Frankenstein. It's not working for this one. So that means we have to do some prompt engineering. Uh, let's see. Come on, brain. We want not just an outline. Um, let's try synopsis. Synopsis is a good word. There we go. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see. List every scene. Ah, uh, so this is like, GPT-3 has the information. I'm just trying to like get it out of it. That's one of the most like frustrating things is the information is in there. This looks a little bit better. Okay, cool. Or she wakes up from her dream. Okay, I don't think this is sufficient, but you know, blah, blah, blah. It tells us most of the story. Okay, so go save this, and this will be Outlines, Alice in Wonderland. Okay, you've seen the process. I'm gonna do this for all five books, just so that way we have a, uh, a summary or outline or synopsis to feed in, so that that way the, the AutoMuse generator knows where the story is going. All right, I'm gonna pause the video again, and we'll come back once I've done some scripting. Okay, I've got the first script, uh, well, started. I just wanna show you what it does um, so that you understand. Um, as we go, uh, this is a really short thing. I had to find this module, but it's just called text wrap. And what it does is it splits, um, splits strings in Python into whatever size chunk you want. So what I do is I open, um, open the book um, just as a text, uh, as a string, and then I break it into 1500 character chunks. And uh, the output so far looks like this. So I just run book to chunks, and it says it, Alice in Wonderland.txt, 110 chunks, Frankenstein, 293, Great Gatsby, 194, Pride and Prejudice, 518. That's a long story. Sherlock, 389. Okay, so we'll have a bunch of sequential chunks um, in order to play with this. Excuse me. Um, yeah, so we're off to a good start. These chunks, uh, for reference, they're gonna go here. So basically the, um, the, the, the outline, which was already generated, let me show you the outlines. 
Um, so the outlines are here. So we've got an outline for each of these. That'll go up at the top. So the story outline. So every every time you input this um, GPT-3, because here's the thing, GPT-3 has no long-term memory. Everything that it needs to know has to be in every single input. Um, this is where human brains are far superior to GPT-3. So neuroscience lesson time. If you look at like, you know, if you ever Google like how much working memory does the human brain have, it'll, you'll get a, some idiotic answer like, oh, the human brain can only hold seven things in it's, you know, in short term working memory. <laughs> that is patently absurd. Um, any writer will laugh at, at that idea because when you're writing, you have to remember all the lore from the story you're writing. If it's a sequel, you have to remember all the lore from the previous one. Um, all the characters, the character voices, language stuff. Now, is that something that you're holding in your, in your memory and you're manipulating? No. So technically, I guess you could say it's not in your working memory, but it is in your recall. So there's a difference between working memory and recall. So GPT-3, which can just recall stuff off the bat, right, right off the cuff. So if you go here, um, let me close some of those. Um, this is what you might call recall. GPT-3 has been trained to just instantly recall a whole bunch of facts. Now, if you're writing a brand new story, it doesn't have that, right? It has no recall because you can just ask, like, um, you know, you can ask it about the adventures of Sherlock Holmes and GPT-3 can spit out usually a good answer. The reason is because it's got recall. However, um, it, does not, it does not have the ability to recall something that it was never trained on. So you have to handle the recall manually. This is where all my work on, on um, artificial cognition comes in because everything that you need it to know, everything for any given situation has to be put into this corpus, this input. So these, um, these summaries, these outlines, that's got to go in because, the, because GPT-3 needs to know where the story is going. Um, let's see. Uh, where was it? There we go. Um, and so then you need to say like, okay, where are we in the story? Um, because if you just give it an outline and a paragraph, like you, if, if you are familiar with a story, then you can read a paragraph and kind of figure out where you are. If, however, you are not familiar with a story, uh, or it's a new story, and you just grab a random paragraph, you're not going to know where you are. And GPT-3 is not magic, right? It's just, it's modeling human writing. That's all it's doing. So if you just give it a random paragraph, it's going to be lost. It's just going to guess where it is in the story. So that means we also need this in, in what's called the working set. So this is another part of neuroscience. When you are working on a task, um, it's, a, it's a task set really is what it's called. So if you've ever heard about the term context switching, if you switch from one task to another, the task set, which is all the memories and facts and knowledge that you've accumulated in your brain, has to get shuffled off. Um, think of it like, like an old fashioned office where everything is on paper. So like, let's say, you know, you're the, 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 the imaginary people in your head, they go fetch all the project documents for project A. And then it's like the boss comes in and says, wait, we got to work on project B. So they got to, they got to take all that, all that task set, all those papers, file them away and then go get project B. So what we're doing here is we're basically recreating the equivalent of, of human memory task set, what's called a task set. So that's all relevant information, knowledge, et cetera, has to be in every prompt um, for GPT-3 um, in, in order to handle larger tasks. Now, I didn't invent this. This is how the human brain works. I'm just approximating human neuroscience in GPT-3. Okay, so that's why I'm doing this. I wanted to sprinkle that in as I go. Um, let's see, what do I have to do next? I got to finish this. That's fine. I just save that out to file. And then we've got to do the summary. So the hardest part of this, of this, um, data, cause like, you know, I just downloaded the books and that's going to be the huge chunk of our data. Um, we've got the outlines again, that's a huge chunk of the data. The hardest part is this because I'm going to have to use GPT-3 to summarize where we are every step of the way. I'm not going to do the whole books. I'm only going to do like the first, you know, few chapters. Um, because one, I'm not going to spend like a thousand dollars fine tuning this for five full books. Um, it probably wouldn't cost that much. Um, this should just be a good proof of concept. Um, but yeah, so in basically just creating a live, a running summary of the story, that's going to be hard. It's going to be expensive. Okay. Pause the video again. We'll come back when I'm ready to show you more. 
stand by. All right, quick check-in as promised. Um, I finished the script. There's got to be a better way to do this. I don't know how to pad zeros, but basically the purpose of this um, little bit is to generate um, uh, sequential files. So you see each of these stories is broken down into um, sequential files. Uh, so they're just straight up numbered. It's in the chunks folder. Uh, so now each chunk is just a bit of the story. Also, it did this weird thing where there's no vertical white space. I think that's okay. I'm not going to worry about it. This is not going into production. I'm just seeing if it even remotely works. Um, yeah. Uh, oh, sorry, my phone's going off. Anyways, I will uh, be back shortly. All right, I was about to give up on this and take a break, but I figured it out. Well, I don't know if I figured out the root cause, but I was getting this error. Let me show you where it kept complaining about um, like could not encode, where is it? I'm just probably go all the way up. Yeah, so you see here error in communicating with OpenAI, char char map character, codec can't encode character, blah, blah, blah. All right, so there's something funky with these files from Gutenberg. So the first thing I tried um, was to go back, whoops, now we can close this one. Um, sorry, this might make a little bit of noise. Okay, so my first, my, the first thing that I did was I tried to go and change the encoding of the books. So encoding, it was UTF-8 bomb. So I just converted it to UTF-8. That didn't fix it. Um, so I was like, okay. Um, GPT-3 should be able to accept all UTF-8, but there's some artifact in this that it didn't like. So here's what I did was I said, okay, let's open the prompt and we'll get, um, we'll encode it to ASCII, which is much simpler than UTF-8, and then we'll decode it back to a normal string. So it's basically saying, okay, whatever, whatever this is, ignore the errors, simplify this codec, make it ASCII standard, and then decode it, and then GPT-3 likes it now. So it's uh, recording this. Basically what I'm doing um, while this is running, so we've got all the chunks uh, here, and then I've got the summaries. So I'm making a summary of the first um, you know, few, uh, few pair, uh, passages of each story. Um, so Alice gets bored sitting by her, by her sister and sees a white rabbit with a pocket watch. She chases it and falls down a rabbit hole. So basically, these summaries can be used to, to stack up and fill in this part. Here, let me just save this file. Um, we'll save this in the... Um, here, actually, I'll put this into the README. Do, 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 the README. All right. General idea. And we'll save that. Um, so this is what it, just so that it's there, it's saved, and then I can close this. Okay, so the outlines, we've got the outlines. I won't show you that again. Where are we in the story? That's what their summaries are going to be used for. Excuse me. So each chunk is going to be summarized. And this one, you know, it's down to two sentences. So Alice in Wonderland 02, if we open the summary, we can um, compare. Oh, whoops, that's, that is the summary. Sorry, I need the chunk. So chunks. Um, Alice in Wonderland 02. So you see it goes from um, 1,500 characters down here uh, down to 127. So by a it's compressed by a factor of 10. Um, and then you could also probably like um, recursively summarize uh, once it gets too long. I'm not going to worry about that this time because this is just a huge experiment in generating something. As far as I know, no one has ever succeeded in generating a whole actual novel um, with this kind of structure. So this should be done by now. Excellent. All right. So if we go into the summaries, we've got 11 chunks for each. So that's 55. Um, I'll probably need more. Let's see. Hmm. Let me think about this, because this is 55, 55 summaries, which will then be used, because if I have five stories, I would need, um, why can't I do math? Five times 40. I would need 40 for each one um, in order to get to 200 samples. Okay, so I guess I will need to do a little bit more. Darn. Okay. Okay. I will let this run. I'll figure out how to uh, pick up where it left off and um, we'll go from there. Uh, be right back. 
All right, um, this is getting rough, so I'm gonna have to split this up into two parts. Um, but let me show you what I've got so far. So first, let's just step through the data because that I think will help. Um, I've only got a few scripts, so I've got the summarized chunks, prepare JSON L, and uh, the book to chunks. So the books start here. This is like the super raw data. It's just a Gutenberg book. It's plain text. There you go. Nothing special there. So let's close all these to clean it up. All right, so we start with books, right? Then we break that into chunks, and each chunk is 1,500 characters long. Um, 1522, why is it 1522? Whatever, it was supposed to be 1,500 characters long. Close enough. They're all the same length, more or less. I'm not sure exactly how that um, text wrap does, does its thing. Anyways, more or less the same length, broken up into chunks, so because basically, think of it like an inchworm. The idea is you write one paragraph at a time or so. Um, so that's the idea. All right, so we take the books, we break it into chunks, then we summarize each chunk. And so the, each of these summaries is nice and concise, very short. Um, oops, don't need to go there. You don't need to see all the research I was doing <laughs> to try and figure some of this out. Um, okay. So then we've got the summaries. Finally, so we got, um, oh, we also have the outlines, sorry. Um, the outlines, which kind of outlines the whole story just so that that way um, it knows what we're trying to achieve. Okay, so finally, we put all that together in a prompt. Um, so here's the, uh, the full prompt. So basically we say, okay, here's the outline, here's the story so far, and here's the last chunk, and we're asking it to produce the next chunk. So what I did was I saved all those out to um, the same file names. This, this just makes it really easy. But one thing you'll notice is that these files get progressively larger. Um, so, whoops, didn't mean to close that. So let's see, which one is the shortest one? I think Alice in Wonderland is the shortest. So the very first prompt, outline Alice is sitting in, in the river, or uh, sitting with her sister by the river. So cool, that's fine. Um, story so far, Alice Adventures in Wonderland is a novel by Lewis Carroll, that's fine. Um, last chunk, so last chunk is like what, what it's, so the, the last chunk is the, is the full prose, and the story so far, um, this one, because it's the very first one, um, just has the, uh, has the summary of this. Um, yeah, and so then the next chunk that we're going to ask it to produce is going to be the same as so notice that uh this prompt or this this one is um 0001 so the next chunk that we're going to match it to is so we've got another folder called completions so it's going to be here so um alice was beginning to get very tired and so what we're asking it to do is um very tired uh beginning to get very tired of sitting by her sister on the bank so you see, it, it just continues right along. And so by having the pairs of prompts and completions, so you see there's the prompt, and that's what the prompts look like, and then the completion that we want it to achieve, same exact file name, so it's easy to pair them. But, so this is the first one, but let me show you how big the last one gets, because it's, it's accumulating. And this is, um, this, is, this is the biggest problem. Um, Let's see, so the completions are the same time, same size each, but the prompts, so the first prompt is four kilobytes, the last prompt is 12. So the outline stays the same length, that's fine. Story so far, um, you see it's getting longer and longer. Um, uh, oh, but wait, there's actually new lines. So finally, you know, the, the summary gets super, super long. So instead of just being this first one, because you remember, you know, the Queen's Croquet game, this is where the first one ended. So what I'm doing is I'm accumulating them all right here. So that it's a summary of the story. And so instead, the summary is now 11,000 characters long. Typically, um, for the original Da Vinci, um, it would average about 6,000 characters with, is 2,000 tokens. Um, so we're way, way over that. We're about twice what could fit. Um, and, and, and we still need to get the rest in, um, the, the, the last chunk. So that was just the length of the summary. Um, all told, uh, oh, and also 
um, not just the length of the summary and the, the last chunk, but the next chunk has to fit into that completion as well. So these are just way too long. Um, but I've got the data, so I've got the, um, oh, that's not the right file. Uh, delete that one. It's novel.json-l. So this is a two megabyte file, and this is what it looks like. So it's just this huge mass of JSON-L. Okay, so that's about as far as I'm gonna get today. Um, this code will be up on GitHub. Uh, I'll come back to this soon. Um, I'm exhausted. Okay, so basically what I need to do is, um, uh, or well, let me show you what the script does uh, that accumulates this. So the, the script that composes the JSON-L is right here. It's called prepare JSON-L. It's really simple. So basically what I do is I grab all the books in the directory called books, ta-da, grab that there, um, instantiate a new um, list, and this is what I'm gonna accumulate all the samples in. So for book in books, so we iterate through each book, iterate through each one of these. We grab the name of the book, and then from with the name of the book, we grab all the summaries that are in that book. So then we go to the summaries tab, or summaries folder, so it's like, oh, okay, so if we're starting with Alice in Wonderland, we just want the summaries that have Alice in Wonderland in the name. So that'll give us these 41 summaries. Oh, and also they get really big and this isn't even done. This is just the first um, 40, 41 um, sections. Um, Pride and Prejudice has over 500 sections. So how the heck are we gonna summarize that? Um, that's gonna be difficult because uh, you're basically gonna have to like super, super ultra paraphrase it. Um, I don't know if it's going to work, but because we're working with a very narrow window. And so this is why I laughed at the beginning of the video where I said, you know, it, anyone who says like the human brain only can only hold like seven things in its working memory. No, you, you, you try and actually summarize and figure out how much working memory you need to write a novel. Um, that or us novelists have a working memory that is several orders of magnitude greater than the typical person, because you need to keep so much in your mind when you're writing a story. Unless there's something I'm missing, who knows. Um, anyways, so back to the script. Um, all right, so we, get, so we get all the summaries for this particular book, we get the outline for this particular book, then we instantiate a new string called summary chunk. So this is what, this is what accumulates um, those, uh, those summaries in the uh, prompts right here. So you know we go down to this one. So the, the story so far, this is the summary. And so this is why it keeps getting bigger is just because I just add to the next um, each time. So it gets just longer and longer and longer um, every, every iteration. So last chunk is open file that has the same name as the current summary. Because remember the, um, the summaries and the chunks have the same name because the summary is just, um, you know, it's a summary of that chunk. So Alice in Wonderland summary 03 is just a summary of this chunk of 03. So suddenly Alice had the moment to stop to think uh, before falling. And so then you look at the summary, Alice falls down a very deep well and has plenty of time to look around as she falls. So you see like, okay, cool. Um, so we've, we've reduced the length, but that's still not enough because it accumulates here. Okay, so we, we, we incrementally build up the summary next chunk uh, prompt. Uh, so then we compose the prompt, which is basically just load this and populate it. So, you know, outline summary and chunk. Um, the outline is, is populated with this variable. Um, you can see that here. So replace outline with the outline, replace the summary with the summary chunk, which is the, uh, the string that keeps getting longer. And then we um, finally, we replace uh, next chunk, uh, or sorry, last chunk um, with last chunk is, is basically the current chunk. Um, and then next chunk is, I wrote a quick little, um, whoops, did not mean to close that. Don't, uh, prepare JSON L, edit. Um, so I wrote this quick little script that you just pass it a file name or a file path of a, of a given summary or chunk and the name of the, uh, of the book. And it will, it will just increment and figure out what the next, um, next chunk is for the completion. Um, and then it'll just pass that data back. Um, so this is what it looks like. I had it output the length of each, um, of each one as it goes. Let me, um, let me add a little bit more so you can see, 
uh, let's see, so we'll have name, so that's the name of the book, um, and then we'll have uh, summary is gonna be the name of the file, so you'll be able to see like which, um, well, I guess the summary is gonna have the file name in it, so we'll just do summary and then length of the prompt plus next chunk so you can see how big that sample is. Okay, so uh, for Sherlock 01, the length is 5,500 characters. That's about at the limit already. Um, and then by the end, for Sherlock 041, it's 14,000. So that's more than twice what we could um, expect to fit. And that's also not even like, not even the full length of the, um, of the story. So I'm gonna have to pause here and go back to the drawing board and do some, do some thinking, some noodling on this. Um, so stick around for part two. It should come out within the next week or so. Thanks for watching.